Hey, hi everyone. So welcome to the another video of Postman series. So today in this video, we are going to see how we can send the first request to from the our postman. Okay. So we have a lot of uh, open free uh, API uh, websites are available. So the one of the famous one, you must have know about this REQ, RES uh, website. So where you can, you can take the endpoints and you can do some practices. Okay. But there are some limitations uh, when you go for this kind of open and free source, uh, I mean, endpoints that are publicly available. So you have some limitations. Okay, you can create the record, but when you are trying to fetch that same record, if you want to modify, that is not available. Okay, that is not available, then that is not. So they have some limitations. So this is one of the uh, API. I mean, API website is available for the samples. You can see here, test your front end against the real API. Okay, so this is all fake data. They will get. Uh, almost like a real time exp uh, responses and it will be always 24 bar 7 it will be running okay because uh, uh, i mean uh, creating the api and making it up and running all the time like you have to post it to some server that will that will i mean so when it is come to the uh, financial wise it will take some cost okay so this they, there are some let's stop uh, free and open api i mean the mock api endpoints are available so we can use them. Okay, this is one of the one you mean, uh, you, you know, must, uh, most of the people will use this one for the practice. Okay. And there are a couple of other also, you can go for this Swagger uh, fake test API. So here also you have something. So Swagger, again, it's similar to Postman. Uh, I mean, uh, the Swagger in the sense, but more like an API repository. Okay, so whatever the API is being developed, they will come and they will store everything in the Swagger. This is kind of like a template. So if you want to try it from directly here, then just click on try out button. And when you send this request, right? So this is a get method to get about the authors. Okay. And this is for fake REST API. So here, uh, this is authors. Okay. For the Azure website, uh, they have some list of authors. So where you can see the responses code is coming as a 200. And this is a response body, sample response. Body. So similarly, you can use this one also for your testing purpose. Okay. And we have another one, which is Borest API. So here also you can see post method, get method, right? Delete, put patch, all the endpoints are available. So this one also you can use and you can practice. And there is something like a, uh, you can go for a dummy REST API example.com website also. So here also you have get method, post method, put method, delete method, everything. Okay, so another website. Uh, so we have one thing, uh, REST, RESTful uh, Booker, okay? So this is more most like a booking ID. Uh, you can create the booking and you can update the booking and you can partial update, patch, uh, delete everything. So so these many uh, API or mock API data websites are available as a free. And there are some some paid one also. So if you want to use anything, is fine. Okay. So I'm going to take this uh, REQ or ES one. So this is for API endpoint. So just click on this API endpoint. So you will get complete API endpoint like this. So just copy this. So we'll go to the postman, okay? So in the postman, uh, by default, like I, I told you early, so you will have this my workspace as a default when you when you do the sign in in the postman, okay? So now I'm going to create one workspace for this particular learning series. So that is I'm going to name as postman tutorial, okay? And I'm going to have this as a personal one. So you can have, I mean, um, you can create multiple workspace that is up to you. So the postman has uh, that feature. So you can have multiple workspace. Okay, This is a workspace just now we created. So this is how your workspace look when you signed into the postman. Okay. And there are some features available for the paid version also. So if you want to upgrade, so you can just click on the upgrade button and you can go to the billing option. So from there you can see the billings. Okay. So now this area, right? So this, this client empty area, this is called as a workspace. Okay. So sorry, not a workspace, workbench. Okay. So this is work, workspace. So we are into the postman tutorial workspace, which is like a placeholder that is given to you from the postman. Okay. And whatever the work that you are going to store here, it will be backed up in the postman cloud server. Okay. So this is workbench. So I'm going to open the new tab. So you can click on this new also. Otherwise, if you go to this new, you have different options, okay? So you can open the HTTP request and you can go for the web socket, gRPC request, collections we want to create, mock server, lot of things, okay? So now we'll click on this new tab, so which will open your um, one new request tab. So I'm just copy pasting that value here, okay? And this is a basically get method, that is what we have copied from here, 
Okay, so here you can see this is a get method list of users. So what is the response they have given? Response code it has to return as a 200, and this is a sample response. Okay, so now we'll come here. We'll send this request. So you can change this two pan view. So if you're not comfortable with the vertical one, and you can change for the horizontal one like this. Okay, so here you can see we we clicked on the send button. So the request went to the server, and we got the response. So how does it work? Right. So as a user from the postman, we are sending the request by giving some API endpoints. So when you click on the send button, it will go to the respective server. The server will respond to you again postman in the response tab. Okay. So this is what happening. We are sending the request. It is going to the server. Server is, I mean, responding the re relevant response that is getting visible in the our response tab. Okay. This is what our response tab. Okay. Whatever you are seeing in the right side, this is called response tab. Okay. So now we are getting some uh, details here, like uh, we are getting the 200 and whatever that they have given in the response, right? This is a response we are getting, okay? So likewise, you can go for a post method, everything. So we'll start with the get method, okay? So this is a get method. So if at all, if you want to create your own API, right? So there are a couple of options are available. So simply you can go to this mock api.io, okay? So when you go for a mock I mean a mock api.io, you can create your own API. Okay. It is, I, I mean, uh, you have to do the sign in. So there are some limitations against the pre pre account. We'll see that one. So once you go to this mock API, okay. So first thing you have to sign in. So already I have signed in by, by using the Gmail, or you can create your own account itself. So what you can do now, now you can go to here and you can create the projects. Okay, so you will get the screen. So when you click on this project, so new project name. So for example, I'm giving the um, postman tutorial. Okay. And if you want to give any, any uh, API prefix, so for example, the API will look like uh, HTTPS, a com company name like abc.io slash user slash type. So if you want to provide any any uh, prefix, you can provide. Otherwise, you can ignore. This is optional. Okay. So for example, if I want to give postman, okay, I can give like this. And if you want to invite somebody to collaborate, that is also available here. Okay. And this is also optional. So when I click on create, one project is created by the name of postman tutorial. So now I want to add my resources. Okay. So this is how the endpoint looks. Okay. So till dot io, it is called base URL. All right. And this is coming from the mock API website. Okay, so they are maintaining our collections, I mean, our API endpoint projects. And this is Postman, which is the resource that we have given while creating the project. Okay, so now we have to start adding the resources, right? So, for example, I want to define the resources like the users, okay, or employees, anything you can give. So, ID, so that is default one. So, created, if you want to have, you can have, otherwise, we can close this. So name, uh, avatar also, I will remove this. So, so name, I'm just going with a couple of details. Name, mobile number. Okay, so mobile number, you can use the Packer.js. So Packer.js is again one more library, which will give you the mock data. So for example, the name, right? So name, when you click on the find name, you can have like a find name, or first name, last name, middle name, right? So we'll select as a first name. Okay, so this one also, I will change it to first name. Okay, and mobile number also if you want to provide mobile. So here must be relevant to some mobile number like a cell phone number or telephone number, something should be like this. Yeah, phone number is there. Okay, and phone number format, uh, again, it will give you something else. The format, I mean, uh, the phone number format. So name, mobile number, and we can go for an address. Okay, so address, you can select what kind of data type, right? So the JSON support, um, string, number, boolean, object, array, everything, right? I mean, only these things. So string, boolean, data, sorry, uh, boolean, object, array, and date is again date format, okay? So address, I'm going to have it as an object because in the address, you will have the road number, street, and you have city, uh, state, right, country, everything. So that's the reason I'm giving as an object and you can go for like a skills. So the skills, I can give it as an array because one user might have n number of skills, right? Like API testing, mobile testing, performance testing, everything. Okay. 
So these are the these are the attribute that I'm going to have it as a schema. Okay, so this is my request schema. I mean the JSON schema. So now if you scroll down here, so you can see the get method. This is how the get method will look. Okay, and if you want to use the post user, this is one endpoint. So I can just click on the create button now. So now our resource is created. Okay, so now if you want to generate some users here, like uh, for example, I'm giving us some two users. Okay, so when you click on the two here, you can see the data is generated. So now what I can do, I can copy this. This is my endpoint. Okay, so this is my endpoint. After that, I have a resource called users. Okay, so let me go to the postman, open the new request tab here slash users. Okay, so when I send this. So I will get two users because in the database, I mean, in the API, right? So we have created two users here. So if you want to see the data, just click on the data. So I have the first name as Aura and I have one more entry. So this is object one and this is the object two, user two. Okay, the same things are coming in the postman as well. Okay, so this is one, one API where you can create and you can experiment it. Okay, so there are other things also like you can use uh, one more website is available. I mean, one more option is available, which is a JSON server using the node package module, which is NPM. Okay. So this JSON like JSON server also is one of the library which is written on the Node.js. So if you want to use this, you have to install the Node.js on your laptop. So it is very easy one. Okay. So we can see get full fake REST API with the zero coding in less than 30 seconds. Okay. So I have created video on the same. Uh, maybe I can give it the uh, description. So otherwise, no, I will cover in my next video. Okay. To install this, you have to use this npm command and you have to create some uh, JSON file. So that JSON file will act as a server. Okay. So now uh, let's go back to the postman. So this is what the user I'm getting. Okay. So this is for the get method. Okay. I'm able to retrieve the user. So now if you want to particularly filter out some users, so what you can do, you can, you can filter out by using the coding parameter. Okay. ID equal to two. Okay. So the moment when I give the value as an ID equal to two, you can see it is getting appended in the URL. Okay, so now if I send this request, then I could see only the user two details. Okay, because I'm doing the filter. Okay, so this is query parameter, path parameter, we'll see in the uh, other topic. So now this is how we have make the get request. So these are the sample websites are available. Uh, you can use them and you can create the, your API request. Okay. So this is called workbench. In the workbench, you can open the new tab and you can select the get method, post method, relevant methods, and you can make your API request, okay? And this is how the API will work. So the moment when you click on the send button, it will go to the server. Server will respond back to the response in the same postman response tab, okay? So this is how the API will work. So if you want to check the console, console will help you for the debugging purpose, okay? So whatever the activity that you are doing here, you can see it will be recorded in the console. So in the console, if you see, you know, so here, whatever the network request get a response getter and the response body also will be printed here. Okay, we'll, we'll study more about the console in the upcoming videos. Okay, thank you guys.